Hello everyone, it's Laura here. Um, let's see, I think I'm here. Hello, hello, I think I'm streaming. Okay, I think I'm, am I live? Let's see here. Squishy, yes, it works. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay guys, so today we're going to do something totally different. Um, don't worry, we'll be back to our normal schedule. Um, I'll be streaming again on Tuesday with the Villain Son book. Um, but today I just wanted to do something different. So, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know the channel Emily Illustrator, but Emily and I made a deal. Um, I said, you know, I'll do encaustic wax painting if you do, um, fluid art. Awesome, I'm live, I'm here. Okay. So, a caveat before we get going. This is not a child activity, and I'm not just saying that because of the whole COPA fiasco. I'm saying that because this is has the potential for you to burn yourself. This is a dangerous activity. You shouldn't be doing this unless you are an adult. You shouldn't be doing it unless you're, if you're clumsy, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Um, so just, just a fair warning. If you, um, if you, you know, if, if you don't like a little bit of danger, this is not for you, but, um, you might enjoy watching it anyway. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> So what we're doing today, it's called encaustic wax painting, and this is actually um, a process that dates back to the Egyptian times. It's a very old paint medium, and I got into this a long time ago. Um, in 2012 is when I started encaustic wax painting, but I haven't done it in a long time. So um, bear with me if I forget how to do something or um, if it takes me a minute to remember things. Um, but anyway, uh, so before we get started, I'm just going to run through sort of a general idea of the things that you'll need to do this, um, this sort of activity. And there's two different types of ways. Hi, Holly. How you doing? Um, hi, Daria. Oh, good. I'm glad you're excited about this. Hi, Emily. Hi. So everybody, Emily is the one that did the fluid art video, so you want to go check out her channel. Um, and it was amazing and I'm really excited to try that out. Um, I've never tried acrylic fluid art before. Um, <laughs> so we have a lot of stuff here. I actually have more stuff than what's on camera, but I just, I couldn't raise my camera up high enough to actually show everything on my desk. So I'm going to go through all the supplies we're going to need. And then, um, and not all of this is required. This is just, some of it's required and some of it's not. Um, and then we're going to jump right on in. And we have two different things we're going to be doing today. Um, hi, Joanna. <laughs> hi, Sue. How you doing? How is everybody today? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited to share, share this with you guys. I haven't really seen a whole lot of people using this medium. And um, I'm a big fan of it myself. So before, before anything else, I'm just going to um, talk about... Um, what I have here. So I have an old pancake griddle. Um, you can't see it because it's slightly off camera. Well, wait, can I bring it in camera? Let's see here. Can I zoom out a little bit? No, I'm all the way zoomed out. You can't quite see it. I don't want to move it too close here. Um, but there's a little dial here. And it's set... It, it's funny because... So this wax medium, it, it needs to melt at, at 150 to 175 degrees. Um, so this, this pancake griddle, this is like a cheapy old pancake griddle. You can get something like this at a, at a thrift store or Goodwill or whatever. That's, you know, a great place to get something like this where you, you don't, you do not want to use this for food. I prefer a griddle with a white surface area so that way you can see the color that you're working with but you can use um, a different color as well so you want it to set to 175 now this doesn't go that low it goes to two, it starts at 200 and this is like the warmer setting here so I just sort of approximate where it is so when it, when the you can see I put some wax 
on my pancake griddle, my, my hot plate, if you will. Um, let me just swap back to the chat. Um, so, so I can tell when the, the plate is the right heat level when that's completely melted. And this here, let's talk about this. So there's two different types of wax mediums you're going to need when you're working with this stuff. There's what they, this, I'm using all the Encausticos brand. I used to actually, um, you know, do demos for this brand. So I have all this old material that I got for free from them. Um, oh, you're working and lurking. Awesome. <laughs> uh, oh, well, that's okay. You can go chat with Grace. I'll, you know, you can watch this back. This is just... This is not coloring at all. This is just something weird and different. So, oh, you love Encausta Kelly. I didn't know um, that you did it. That's awesome. Yeah, Sherry, it's not a very common uh, art medium, I don't think. Um, but uh, I just wanted to kind of show you guys because I was talking with Emily about it. So um, anyway, um, the one of the types of encaustic wax that you're going to need in this brand, they call it slick wax, but really it's a blend of paraffin and a couple of other synthetic waxes, and they don't tell you their formula, but um, this works great to clean your brushes, and when you handle these wax tins, you want to make sure to use, I use just regular old wooden clothespins. This really helps to keep from burning yourself. You never want to touch anything that's on that hot plate. Just please, please do not burn yourself while you're doing this. So I use just a pair, I mean a, a clothespin, and, and that's how I move these things around. So you can see it's starting to get melty. So that that's slick wax. That will that will clean brushes. So um, you'll never get the wax out of your brushes. I'll talk about the brushes later. But you can clean the color out of them, and that's what that slick wax does. The next step, the next thing we have is wax medium, and I've already refilled it. So What's great is you don't have to keep buying these little tins. They, this brand has like big bags that you can use to refill your medium when you're running low. And I go through this stuff so much that I have these big bags that the company gave me. Um, so I've already, I've already like filled my wax medium with some fresh wax medium. So I'm gonna put put that on my hot plate, and you guys will see just how quickly this stuff starts to melt. Oh, come here, you. Yeah, so you never want to touch it directly, but it does cool pretty quickly. And I'm hoping Addy, Addy is sleeping right now. Um, Joanna, wax is flammable. I'm not using any open flame with this. You do not want to use open flame. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're using encaustic wax. So encaustic wax is a medium where pigment is suspended in beeswax and damara resin and what happens is is in order to get the in order to get it moving it comes both in tins like this and also in sticks and you you know you can't really it's it's solid because it's wax think of a candle like you need to warm it up to get it moving so in order to get this stuff flowing you need to heat it up so that's why we have the pancake griddle here <laughs> I'll sh I'll show you everything. Don't worry. I'll go through. <laughs> I'll go through the whole entire process. So um so the wax medium is great. This is like to make to thin things out to make it less pigmented. Um, think of it sort of like if you're using watercolor. Think of it as the water in watercolor. So the wax medium is something to thin down the paint and make it more transparent and also make it um less pigmented. And I have. <laughs> I have this big gigantic tin so if you're using a big brush then these big tins are really good to clean I'm not going to put it on there I don't think I'll be using a big brush today but I just wanted to show you so let's go into brushes since we're already here oh don't worry I'll be I'll be careful <laughs> all right guys if <laughs> if you have something for me um, just put it in all caps so that way I can catch it in the chat um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Holly. We have uh, great minds think alike. So um, there's several different types of brushes that you can use for encaustic wax. However, I can guarantee you that most, if not all, brushes will burn when you put them on the pancake griddle. 
So what you want to do is make sure that, uh, my favorite ones are these hockey brushes, they call them, or hockey, I'm not sure how to say it. It's a goat, it's a natural goat hair bristle brush. And these are amazing. They stand up real, I know they look horrible, but that's just because they're stiff from the wax and they've got some pigment in them because, you know, I was probably doing a demo the last time I used these and so they're a little bit messy. But we can clean them up really easily. Um, but I just love these brushes. They they work really well. Um, they hold the wax really well, and they don't burn. Um, they're amazing. So, and this is I'll put um, once the video is over, I'll put, I'll get links to everything so that way you can buy it. But um, this is the Connoisseur brand hockey brushes. Um, and then the other kind of brushes that you can use, although I have to say. You have to be a little bit more gentle with them, and they do end up burning if you leave them on the griddle too long. Um, these are, I believe, they're boar bristle brushes. Um, so these are okay. I, I buy very cheap ones because, again, they do end up burning. Once you put wax on your brushes, it that's it. It's an encaustic wax brush. You're never going to get any other medium on there. So just fair warning there. And then another thing that I love to use with encaustic wax is um, like clay sculpting tools to like scrape away. And you see I actually have some old um, wax in this here. Um, it, we, you can scrape away layers. Um, think of like, again, a candle. Like a candle, when you cut into it, it's kind of soft even if it's completely cooled off. So what's amazing is like if there's something wrong with it or you you don't like what you've done, just let it cool and then you can scrape it away. It's almost like an eraser. And then another thing that I just find essential is um, a metal palette knife uh, just for cleaning, moving things around, you know, just um, general stuff. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. Woo! Yeah, I love doing new things. Um, and uh, when, when I was invited to try um, this medium, I was, I was like, yes, of course I'll learn it. <laughs> and so, um, I don't mind, uh, sharing that with you. Okay, so beyond the, um, clothespins, I also, this is a, um, oh, this is a, uh, hot plate meant for printing, and, and I'll, I'll do that first. That's why it's getting warm on the, um, on the griddle. But in order to handle it, I tend to use a pair of pliers with a rubber grip. Um, and that's because you don't, again, you do not want to touch any of this stuff directly. You always want to use a tool to handle anything that's been on that hot plate. I can't say that enough. Um, I've, you know, I don't want anybody getting burned. Um, and then, so let's move on into, oh, another thing you're going to need, um, while you're painting, and I just took this out. There we go. While you're painting, you might need to warm up your painting as you're going to keep the wax moving and flowing if you're trying to blend. So a heat gun, and I actually couldn't find my old heat gun, so I bought a brand new one. This one's cheap. I got it at Home Depot for like 25 bucks. Um, it works, you know, I, I think I had the exact same one. It works great. Um, so that's perfect. And then um, as far as um, substrates go, so you can, you can use a lot of different types of um, surfaces when you're painting or printing with encaustic wax. So something that's really cheap, I went to Hobby Lobby and there's this, ooh, there's this place called the Wood Pile and you can get like these really cheap pieces of wood. Um, so I thought that might be fun to try and print on. Um, you can also get a, um, a masonite panel that's been gessoed, so I got something like that for us to paint on. You can also use um, a flat piece, this is like a cradled board, but you can just get a flat piece of masonite and gesso it yourself. You can get them cut down at the Home Depot or another hardware store, they'll cut it for you if you ask. Um, you can use watercolor paper, now I do recommend you use 300 GSM watercolor paper. And the reason why is because you need a stiff surface. If the paper is too flexible, like this isn't super flexible, so it'll be okay, but if the paper is really flexible, then the wax will end up cracking or peeling off. Um, so you want something that's more rigid. Um, this is about the most flexible I would go, and I cut them really small so that way 
um, number one, I haven't done this in like seven years, so I just wanted to do something quick and easy to start with. But number two, um, if, they're, if the sheets are too big, then again, they're a little bit more flexible. You can also use things like cardboard, um, you know, um, mat board, any kind of, you could use glass even. I mean, there's so many possibilities for painting um, with this medium. So, um, you know, bits of metal, like anything that you can think of, um, you can probably paint on it. Hi, Joe Beth. <laughs> Let's see, and hi Pickle, hello, thanks for coming guys. Okay, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. So the last thing that I just wanted to share with you is the, the pigment itself. So um, my favorite way of using the encaustic wax medium is actually these sticks. Um, Encausticos makes a wax stick that is um, really, really fun to use because you can just scribble right on the hot plate and then the wax just sort of melts and it's really fun. So I love using those, but traditionally they come in tins like this. And I love having, like, again, this is a really old um, little skillet or something that I got at the, um, at the thrift store. You know, you can, you can um, use these little tins and... Um, and put, so what you would do is, again, put them on the pancake griddle, just like I've done with these. But since I have a small griddle, I find they take up a whole lot of space, so I end up not really liking using these. So if you have a small griddle, I recommend using the sticks. If you have a large griddle, then I do like these because they're a lot more fun to dip in and, and you get more pigment out of it that way. So there's couple different ways you can go about it. Now, I'm not sure about any other brands. I've only had experience with this brand, but um, yeah. Hi, Sammy. How you doing, honey? All right. Yeah, lurk away, guys. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to keep my handling tools handy. And um, oh, another thing, essential. So you don't use water to clean up, you use paper towels. So you just absorb the excess wax with a paper towel um, and uh, that's the way that you clean up. So like here, I'll show you. So since it's warm here, now with the paper towel, you have to be careful. So what I do is I fold it, fold it, fold it so that it's, you never wanna get your hands close to that hot, hot plate, right? So you don't wanna have don't have one layer of paper towel between you and that hot plate. I have a bit of a pocket of air in between here, so that way I'm not anywhere near that hot plate. So you just have to be really careful as you're cleaning up. Um, and I just fold and fold and fold until I saturate the paper. Okay, let's get set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna leave my palette in the frame for you guys, so hopefully you guys can see a little bit of what I'm doing. Let's see, can you guys see okay? Um, you know what, Emily, I'm not really sure. I don't think so because um, this is meant for painting, so it's got, um, a, it's, I don't know how to explain. I don't think it's the same. I could be wrong, though. This has Damar resin and beeswax. And, guys, it smells like, oh, it smells so good. It's like... It doesn't smell like crayons, it smells like beeswax, like honey beeswax. So, so cool. Okay, I need, so I use these little hair clips when I'm handling the pieces of paper. Um, I just find that they work really well, so you can do that. Um, there's a whole lot of ways that you can, a whole lot of different tools, you could use tweezers, any kind of, the, the point is I'm trying to make is do not touch anything that's on this surface. You can see now that it's a workable temperature. We're all wet here, so we're ready to go. Now, the wax cools very quickly, so I'm just gonna show you, within about five to six seconds, I can touch it. It's no longer hot. Now, I don't recommend doing that if you haven't had experience doing this before because you can burn yourself, like I said. But just as a fair warning, um, the, the wax, it's like, it's not dry time, it's cool time. So again, like think about a candle. When a candle 
like drips down, how fast does it take to cool down and become hard? It's very quick. So you have to work fast. This is a quick medium. Um, <laughs> do not eat it, Emily. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get in so much trouble. You guys are going to like... <laughs> Hi, Lisa. <laughs> okay, just putting it out there. Do not eat the wax. Do not touch the wax. Don't do what I'm doing. No, just... <laughs> yeah, if you're accident prone, I don't think this is a good activity for you. <laughs> <laughs> Donna. <laughs> Little red flags. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are so much fun. Okay. <laughs> Even if the wax smells good, do not put it in your mouth, please. That pigment is toxic. You do not want to eat it. Okay. So what we're going to start out first by doing is something that's similar to Emily's fluid wax sort of, you know, abstract art where you have to kind of let go you lose a lot of control and you just got to let the wax kind of do what it wants to do. So it's super fun. So my hot plate is warm and ready. I can tell because my mediums are nice and um, liquid. Now you don't want any uh, smoke to be rising. If it's smoking that means your hot plate is too hot and you're actually burning the wax. It'll release toxic fumes in the air, so you just want to stay away from it. But if you're not fuming, <laughs> if you're not steamy, then you're totally fine and you can do this indoors. So just watch that, make sure it doesn't burn. If it starts to steam, then you got to just turn down the heat just a little bit. So I'm going to start by just, um, I like I said before, I love these sticks. I find them to be so much fun. This here is a metal plate it's just it's meant for this it's called a um, encaustic printing plate and what I'm going to do is just sort of start and you can see how quickly it melts I'm just touching this to the thing and you can use any colors you want this is just free form um, and you can just throw down some color and basically I just try and not touch them together so that way I'm not transferring too much. I mean, you know, it's not perfect. It doesn't always work out, but you do what you can. Um, so I'm just throwing down some colors right down on the surface. This. Now you can do this on the hot plate, but I've actually found that the printing plate gives you a longer working time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, if you want, you can just go ahead and press it right in. Um, I'll show you how what that looks like. Let me add a couple more colors for contrast. Let's see. What color? What is this? I don't know. It's a dark color. Let's find out. Ooh, blue. Okay, perfect. So I'll just show you how it looks when you put it down right on the hot plate. So this is going to be, oh no wait, I'm going to do it, the, the drag method. So I just put it down. And you see it starts to saturate. And that's what we got there. Now it didn't, I didn't press down so it didn't quite get everything on there. So that's when we can take a brush. Um. <laughs> when it smokes on plug it, go back to markers. So let's just get my brush warmed up here. So I'm just putting the brush down. It's got, it's full of wax. So I'm just pressing it down onto the hot plate. And this is already cool. I can touch it. So actually here, instead of doing that, let's just dip it again. Let's see what happens. Let's, uh, which way do I want to do this? And this time here, we'll press it down so that way we make sure get it real good. And, and you see, with the watercolor paper, it does come through. Whoops. That's going to be bad. See, I haven't done this in a long time. Oh, that came out kind of fun. So this is this is so much fun because, again, you really have to kind of just lose, 
lose yourself in it. You can't really like, you don't know how it's going to look and every time it looks different. So I'll do another one now that I've gotten sort of the hang of it again. Like I said, I haven't done this in seven years, so I'm kind of refiguring it out myself. As we go, we'll figure it out. And I don't know why I love using earthy colors for this, but um, I think because I see landscapes a lot in it, so... Okay, so let's try this again. We've got a different color palette. Which side do I want? This side. <laughs> just throw it down. Now I'm missing a corner here, so I'm just going to kind of slide it around. That'll create a really cool effect. Make sure everything's soaking in here. Let's see what happened. Is that down? Oh, pretty. That turned out better. Um, yeah, you could use old crayons. However, old crayons are actually not meant for melting, so they could release a lot of toxic fumes. This, this stuff is exactly, it's meant for exactly what we're doing. This kind of reminds me of like a coral, kind of with the beachy. What I love about these is they're always sort of Fun and you never you could see so many things in them so let's do a couple more and then I'll show you guys the painting method um, so what's cool about the encaustic wax brand that I have here is they do have metallics so this here is like a coppery color so I'm gonna try that oh yeah I remember this being super shiny so much fun let's clean that off and what other color? I love this color. So pretty. So once, you, you could clean this off if you wanted to and do a whole new color palette, but I kind of like just sort of using the same palette and just sort of adding as I go. There's no right or wrong way to do this though. Honestly, as long as you don't burn yourself, you're fine. Um, let's put some of this lighter color in here. And you guys know I love my blue, so I'll put some blue okay. All right, ready? Hi, CB. Hi, Connie. <laughs> Yeah, the dark copper, that's going to be really pretty. So let's let's try and get most of that. Okay. Don't touch it. And the more you slide it around, the different patterns you'll make. Let's see, where's my... Oh, there it is. Ooh. Okay, so I left that on there too long. Let's try it again real quick. Let's see, I'll put more of that copper down, since we all love that. Oh, this is just so much fun. And the smell is amazing. There we go. So, I missed a spot here. So we're going to go back in, see if I can just get some of it. There we go. That's fun. Okay, I don't like that one as much, so we can paint on it. Um. <laughs> Surgical tools, you know, get creative. You can use you can use, you can use whatever you want. Yeah, this is so what's beautiful is these are super shiny, very, very pretty. Um, another color I have, here's this one. I haven't actually used it yet. So let's try this guy out. So always remove the wrapper before you use it. Because this wrapper is plastic. It will melt and not in a good way. This, this one here is super gold pearl. 
let's try this one out. Oh yeah, that's gold. So pretty. Let's let's throw some of my favorite color in there with it. Why not? Okay, let's see what happens with this. Ready? Bam. Okay. Okay, that's cool. I don't know if I like how little paint is on this side. So hold on, let's double dip it. This is the only time double dipping is allowed, guys. Oh, sorry, I bumped the camera. There we go. And if the, there's little edges or whatever that you don't have um, done, you can always go in and just paint a little blob later. You love it? Awesome! Yeah, it's a great winter project. I would never do this in the summertime in my apartment. Guys, look at this. I don't know if this is picking it up here. Let me see. Can you see this? How sparkly and beautiful this color is? Oh my gosh. I just love this stuff. So much fun. I don't know. Here. Yeah. Anyway, so, so they have a lot of really beautiful metallic colors. Um, let's go... What did, what said, wait, what happened? Um, yeah, Sammy, I usually do, that's why I have all these little sheets. I, I do a whole series in the same palette and then, like, arrange them together. I love doing these printing plates, and they're so much fun. Um, it's not like, it's not like you have a lot of control, but you can kind of see, like, how things will happen, you know, if you... Ooh, I must have liked this color. I only have a little left. Let's see what... Oh, it's that blue I love. So when it gets down to this size, I do recommend you, again, just go ahead if you can. Whoops. Oh, get off. Okay, that's not going to work. Let's try this guy. Yeah, that's going to work. Don't get your hand too close to that hot plate, guys. Let's put some more, what do you think, maybe more of this brass, or copper rather, not brass. And maybe, let's just go all crazy and do both. And I'm going to throw some white in there because I feel like it actually gives a lot of really beautiful contrast. Let's put some more in, right, right in there. Okay, maybe this one will be really nice, let's see. So basically I pull it up, once you start to see it seeping through, that's when you know it's saturated the paper. Oh, that's pretty. Let that cool down. Um, yeah, the golden copper is really beautiful. Yeah, so it's fun. You get to play with color palettes and try new things and fool around. Let's put some browns in here maybe with the... Pretty. So I'm mixing some brown in with that copper. And let's see, what other color? Maybe let's put some red. We haven't really used any reds. Let's leave that out for now. Ooh, this color is cool. This is like chartreuse. Actually, it's sort of yellow, isn't it? It's okay. We can make chartreuse color just by kind of... And I need a dark color again. I'll use that one. How about this? Oh, I, I always love this green. I don't know why. And let's throw a little bit more of that gold on there right in the middle. So even though we put the same colors on, they never turn out the same. So that's why it kind of reminded me of Emily's project. Because um, I'm just sort of letting it kind of spread around for a minute here. Let's see. Boom. 
Uh, it kind of reminds me of M's project because it's not, there's, you don't really have total control over what's happening. You just kind of got to let it, let it flow and do its thing. Oh no. Okay. Well, that's all right, actually. Let me just, uh, let's dip this side again. There we go. That's pretty. Um, yeah, it, it bleeds through. That's okay. This is watercolor paper, but you know, as long as it's not, as long as you don't like crack it, it's not going to be a problem. The bleed through is just the wax, but wax is a preservative. Actually, let me dip this corner. You see that? So this is when, now that I have a lot of excess wax on my palette, I'm just going to, you see these corners that I use to like pick it up with? Just dip it. Let's use up what we have there. Let's put a little. Um, yeah, it's totally fine if it bleeds through. And I'll show you, um, let's, let's actually try. That's cool. Okay, I think we covered everything here. So let's let's leave these guys go, and let's try a bigger surface. So I haven't ever tried these um, wood blocks. I've just seen them done. So I just figured it'd be kind of fun to try out. So let's go ahead and see how it looks. Now these were on a white piece of paper, so let's see how it looks on a different color surface. So let's put, let's make this really contrasty. Um, hi Shannon, thank you for coming, hello, all right guys, Ooh. okay, so the trick I do is I always try and have darks and lights, and by having contrast it creates interest in the composition, um, that's my trick with, with making them look good. But as far as like what colors you pick, please do your own thing. I'm using a palette that I, that I gravitate towards, but, um, you can pick whatever colors you like. And that's, I think why I love it so much. There's a lot of freedom here to do pretty much whatever you feel like. All right. We're just going whole hog with these metallics, but I just love them. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's put some of that over there, and then maybe a little more blue, because you guys know I love blue. Okay, now let's try it. Ready? Woo! I also recommend covering your surface before you start, because you just saw I just splatted. I'm letting it kind of soak in, but now how am I going to pick this up? I didn't think this through. Oh goodness. Oh, nice. It's double sided. Hmm. Didn't think this through. Let's get some needle nose pliers. <laughs> so, this experiment might not have worked out so well. Yeah. Oh, that actually turned out pretty cool. Um, let's try that again. I think the needle nose pliers are the way to go with that. This is something new I haven't done before. So let's do it again. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to leave you, let you guys down. Let's try it again though. Uh, we're gonna be just fine, guys. And you see, I haven't cleaned my palette the whole time, or my plate the whole time. That's because um, the the wax doesn't really go bad. Like as long as you don't burn it, you can keep using it and using it and using it. So um, it's really great that way. So I just keep using it till I want to switch my palette. But I'm gonna use all the same colors with this, just because I hate wasting it. Number one, and number two, I like having a series all the same color palette. Okay, I need some bright colors in there to kind of zhuzh it up a little. Maybe some of this right 
there. And there's that. Here it is. And it's funny, my palette always starts out real organized, and by the end, I'm a complete disaster. So, how am I gonna. <laughs> Let's think about this here for a second. Aha! Let's see if this works. So I'm just going to take a roll of packing tape. Let's see how that works out. Nope. Oh, the suction. This is a good experiment, actually. So I'm just going to drag it to the side and pick it up with the pliers. Aha! Okay. That's not turning out as nice as I had hoped, so I'm not going to even do another one. That's the fun thing about experiments, though. You never know what's going to happen. So I'll, I'll finish off with the other two bits of watercolor paper, and let's just clean up this palette, and then we can get going on the painting bit. So you can see it's kind of tricky to pick up, but sometimes it makes cool patterns when you do that. Let's put some more gold on there. Drop it right there. Okay, so this is a really fun, easy way to enjoy encaustic wax without having to worry about painting something or... Ooh, that one's pretty. Oh my gosh. Let's see, where's the ugly one I don't like? Which one was it? This one. Yeah, let's, let's really quick dip it again. Nice. So you can dip it as many times as you feel like. I'm going to snag some of this beautiful color. Okay. I'm digging that. Let's dip this one too. I don't like this area here, so I'm just going to cover it up. Make it look intentional. There we go. Oh, right. So what's great is this is a really fun, easy activity. Once you really get, I like that. That almost looks like the ground. You see that? Okay. <laughs> so so yeah. What's great is the watercolor paper. I I use the Canson XL um, watercolor paper, so it's really cheap. I cut it into three inch by three inch squares. And then we just had a grand old time um, doing whatever. I'm actually going to move my wax medium off for a moment. Just so that way I can clean the plate without knocking them over. Um, okay, so to clean the plate, get a whole bunch of paper towels. And the first thing I do is just soak up the excess. So you just want to kind of get as much of that up as you can. Okay. And then we can use another wad of it. Now this hot plate's really, really hot. It conducts heat extremely well. So you definitely want to be careful when you lift it. Usually what I do is I have a surface ready to put it into. So in this case, I'm actually going to really quick do that. That's just part of the reason why I have this guy here. So it's perfect for that. I just dump the um, dump the plate into here. You know, I'll lift it up with my. You'll see it. I'll move these guys out of the way, and then we can. So these are great. You could put these on a greeting card. 
you could make a whole series of them and frame them they're just so much fun and and it gives a very unique interesting look I think um, okay so once it gets to this point you kind of got to hold it because it's going to start sliding around with all that wax underneath of it so I kind of lean so what I'll do is I'll tip the edge off I have these really good yeah see it's stuck to it I have these really good pliers hold them real tight and then you can clean I hope you guys can see this okay you don't have to get it perfectly clean you're just going to use it again for wax so it does not need to be perfect I just really quick wipe down the back side and then dump it right in excuse me sorry about the noise That woke up Abby. She's all right though. She'll go back to sleep. And now our hot plate is a hot mess. So what I'm going to do, let's just, good. Abby went back to sleep. She's fine. So let's just clean this all up and get ready for painting. So painting is a totally different process. I mean, not totally different. We're still using the wax, but we're just going to be dipping a brush and painting with it. So it's very, very easy to clean up. You just, again, want to make sure that you have plenty of paper towel between you and that hot plate and keep your fingers away from the plate itself. Okay. That's fairly good. Again, I'm not going to be using this to eat off of, so I don't need it to be perfectly clean. But I do need my wax mediums back on there so I'm gonna move them on you can see they've already started to harden up a little bit that's okay they'll, they'll warm right back up okay let's try painting on one of our disasters I don't like wasting stuff so let's see what happens I kind of like how this happened though Maybe I'll keep that for something like a sign or something. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, but maybe let's try painting on this guy first to get the hang of it, and then we'll move to the bigger, the bigger thing. What do you guys think? Card with a glossy side. Yeah, I haven't tried a card with a glossy side, but you know what's great about it is you you really just have to play around. So. Um, yeah, it's a very, very quick process. And, and the painting process, I'm going to sit down for this now, I think. The painting process, let's see, can you guys see okay? Should I zoom in a little? Let me see here. Maybe just a wee bit. No, actually... I kind of want you guys to be able to see the palette completely, so we'll just, we're just gonna deal with. I'll hold them up later. I guess that'll be the way we go. It's kind of tricky to do this. Um, okay, so let's see here. We have a little canvas, so maybe let's try, I kind of like bits of this, but not everything. Let's try maybe doing something like this. So this is where our little tins are a little bit easier to use, so I'm going to throw a couple on here. The colors I love using the most, the blues. So they're cold right now, that's how I can touch them. Once they get warm, I can't touch them anymore. I'm going to probably repeat myself a bazillion times, so please, please don't burn yourself. Okay. Yeah, I don't want the other colors. Yep, yeah. okay. All right, so to get my brush ready to go, 
I just put it on the palette. And you can see there's some color in there. That's okay. And this is this is why I love the goat hair is because it really doesn't burn. I can leave it like that for a minute or two. It'll warm it up and get it flexible. Excuse me. Okay, that is old wax, so it needs to come off. Why are you smoking? There we go. There we go. So now we have, see how it gets flexible? And now I can dip it in the slick wax and get it clean. Just get any excess pigment out of there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now it feels like a regular brush just by warming it up like that. Um, <laughs> either that or else you guys have all taken off. <laughs> But either way, that's cool. Um, so this is how I clean a brush. I just sort of like take the slick wax, press it around, and then let the paper towel absorb all that pigment. And then just clean up. The slick wax does have a lower melting rate, so you don't want to leave it to sit there on the hot plate too long by itself because it might give off a little bit of steam. Okay. All right. So now some of my, I don't know why it's wiggling like that. Let's see if I can put a paper towel under that to keep it from getting noisy. There we go. That's a little better. All right. Let's see, you guys can see this okay? All right, so now I just sort of want to fix up. So I'm going to take some of this blue and you can mix the, um, let's turn this down just a smidge. You can mix the, um, the wax sticks in with the, with the pans, that's fine. And now the brush gives a totally different texture. So I'm using it straight without um, watering it down or melting it or adding any medium to it. The medium will make it more liquid and also thinner. you guys see this okay? Uh, I mean, if you were to leave the brush, the hot brush, on there for a while, it might. But honestly, no. I mean, it really just leaves whatever's on the brush down. So now let's put in some... Does that answer your question, Joanna? Does anybody else have any questions? <sighs> yeah, you can layer and layer and layer. And it builds the texture. I'm going to make this one really, really thick so you guys can see. how quickly and easily texture forms with this stuff. So I'm just covering the area. I kind of like, maybe I'll fix a little up here, but I kind of like that goldy area. Let's put, let's put a little more gold down and actually let's mix in so I haven't cleaned my brush yet. If I wanted to though, what I can do is just sort of like get it warmed up and then just sort of wipe it down. You don't need to go with the slick wax all the time unless you really want to switch like from from like, you know, a dark color to to like yellow, say, then you'll probably want to So 
So again, we're not trying to do anything representational here. We're just trying to fix a canvas that went wrong, or a, a piece of wood rather that went wrong. Um, but uh, later, in just a moment, once I get the hang of doing this again, we can uh, we can do a little landscapey scene or something. Okay, so let's put a little bit more here. Now I'm going to switch to my little brush. Now these brushes aren't the goat hair bristle brushes, so you don't want to leave them on there too long. What I do is I just get them warmed up, but I, I keep them moving and I don't press hard. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, I don't know why. I just love these good bristle brushes. So if, if you have a big one and you want little detail, you can kind of use the side of the brush. I really have no idea what I'm doing. All right. Got some slick wax on there. It's starting to steam, so you want to get that off. So we're just going to clean up. Ooh, squeaky clean. Turn down a little. Um, Sammy, so I was actually um, approached by the Encausticos brand and I, they saw I was doing uh, an acrylic wax, I mean acryl acrylic wax, an airbrush demo. Um, I, I did like an airbrush demonstration as part of a street fair kind of thing like you know like people were just like selling their art on the street it was like a little art show um and I was doing an airbrush demonstration and the Encausticos lady um came up to me and asked me if I would want to do um encaustic wax and so they set me up with all the materials I didn't buy any of this stuff um and I did a whole bunch of demos um like workshops and so that's how I got started doing it and I ended up doing about 20 different paintings for this lady who fell in love with my encaustic wax work um, so I did a whole bunch of them back back in 2012 and I have some on my Facebook page if, if you're my friend on Facebook you can kind of see some of my old work that I used to do um, see, I don't know if that's making it better or not. I like right here, so I'm going to leave it alone. I think let's put in some, what's that one color? Here it is. I swear this color saves everything. Okay. Hmm. Kind of want to. So this is just an abstract thing. We're just fixing the mess we made before. I do want a darker color here. So let's try that. Let's see. Okay, let's see if I can fix just a little bit. There we go. Much better. Okay, so um, I'm going to move on now to actually painting something 
like we're going to actually try and make. And I used to do all these wax waterfalls when I was doing them. So I think I'm going to try one of those because it's been a long time. Let's see if I can remember how I used to do it. <laughs> you could see doing this during a blizzard. Yeah, I mean, it's nice and toasty in my... Uh... Yeah, oh yeah, here, I'll show you how that happens. Yes, we can use a scraper for sure. Here, wait, let's use it on the one that we messed up on, so that way if we don't make it. So, so these little cr clay scraper tools are so cool. You can, I don't know, here, let me zoom in for this. Hold on. I don't know if you guys can see. So you can draw all kinds of patterns. And if you go at a different depth, it kind of gives a different look. So you can do all sorts of things. Now, say say you only want to take off a little bit, like you like you just want to reveal some of it underneath, you can do that. And you see how it kind of erases it? So it's like sculptural too. Like you can go in and out with the material. Like you can add more and then subtract. It's so cool. All right. I hope that kind of answered that question. Did that help? Um, <laughs> hi, Mousy Jen. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is a very good cold day project. It is toasty in my apartment right now. I'm not complaining. Okay, so that's the scraper thingy. Cool. All right, let's try. Let's try to actually paint something. Maybe. I don't know. I don't have anything in mind here other than I want to do a landscape. So we're just going to kind of have fun um, and do whatever. So I usually start, let's see, this is already stiff again. Let me grab another paper towel. You're going to go through so many paper towels using this, just a fair warning. So have a whole roll ready. So you've got to kind of I'm going to get most of this out of this brush. Let's just try. And the reason I want you guys to see my palette, oh wait, I need to zoom back out, is because I want you guys to be able to see the entire process, not just the painting surface, which is also out of frame. while I'm cleaning up. Um, hi Shara, nice to see you. Yeah, you could use all sorts of carving tools. Basically anything that you have available. I'm pretty sure as long as it's metal and it won't melt, like don't use anything plastic please. You're gonna create yourself a whole lot of fumes and that's not healthy. But yeah, if it's if it's uh, metal, you can definitely use it. So I try and be good and reuse my paper towels until I can anymore. Okay, wow, this has a lot of pigment in it. It's starting to come clear though. I don't know if you guys can tell, but. I can see it happening. So I'm dipping into the slick wax, which is the cleaning medium. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to be nice and clean again. All right, so now another technique to keep yourself from needing to clean your brush too much, because it is kind of a pain to clean the brush. So I like to work dirty, dirty brush technique. Let's just make sure this is all nice and clean. Okay, so this is that cradled 
masonite panel that's already been gessoed for us. You don't have to have it gessoed. It, I mean, this stuff is so thick. You know, you can do it right on the plain wood like we were doing before. Um, oh, good, they're metal, yeah. No, um, you don't need to spray it or anything. It's wax. So when it hardens, you can handle it. I mean, now, if you dig your fingers in, yeah, it, you can scrape it away. But um, wax is archival, and it doesn't, like, fall apart. Or I mean, wax is resistant to oil and water. So um, this is what they used to paint their boats, like, Back in the day, you know, in the, like the ancient times, they used to, this is what they used to decorate their boats to help make it a little bit more water resistant. So, um, yeah, wax, is, it'll, it'll actually last probably longer than acrylic or oil or watercolor or any other medium. It's a very um, cool medium for that. Okay, let's grab this guy. So let's see, any other questions? Um, it depends on what brand you use, Sammy. Now I'm using archival pigments, they're light fast, so they're high quality, they will not fade. Um, if you use a cheap brand or if you're melting Crayola crayons or doing something else like that, yeah, they will fade. So it all depends on what you're using. But this particular brand I know is light fast. So that's one of the reasons why I like using it. And the pieces that I did over seven years ago, are st they look exactly the same as they did when I made them, which is really cool. So I'm watering it down now with the wax medium, getting it real nice and thin. And I like to work from background to foreground, so we're going to start with the sky. I just kind of want to... You see how quickly it dries? It's already cool to the touch. But this stuff builds texture so quickly. It's so much fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, Vikings, I think, did use it. But I think it dates all the way back to the Egyptians. So it is a very old medium. So we're just bringing it back. Oh, no, a hair. That's not going to work. Here we go. Sorry, my bad. It's fixed. Um, what's also cool is this is a great collage medium, too. So you could put a piece of paper down and, and put wax medium over it. And the wax medium itself is very transparent, so it would work really well for that. So there's so many ways you can use this beyond what I'm showing you here. If you guys really like this, we can do another session um, with, with more techniques. If this is something you guys really like to see. Yeah, it's, yeah, you have to work quickly. You cannot be fussy. You can see it's already I can't, it's hard to blend. You gotta kinda, but that's why I layer stuff. I just layer and layer. So by the time I'm done, these paintings get so thick. So the way that you blend, if you want to, this is where the heat gun comes in. Let's move these things out of the way so that way we don't melt those. So uh, incoming sound. So I have it on the low setting and I'm just sort of moving it around and it will warm it up. I don't know if you guys can see this, it's starting to get a shine on it. See that? So I'm melting it down. So this is how you can level it out if you don't want brush strokes. I don't 
don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, so heat gun is for melting and moving. Now, I'm not going to actually um, do anything to that. I just wanted to kind of, oh, no. Um, I just kind of want a bit of wax. I just wanted to kind of show you how you can level it out. Now all those brush marks that I had are a lot smoother and less, um, cause it leveled like it kind of, and the longer you hold it on there, the more it will do that. Um, okay. So now let's go, uh, let's see. I, I kind of want to do like a foresty scene. So let's do that. So I'm going to start out with some bluey green and maybe some more forest green. The other reason I like the goat hair bristle brushes is because they do hold the heat longer. So now I'm just making random marks. I'm just sort of, again, this is not a precise medium. If you want fine detail, this is not the right medium because you're just going to be frustrated. So you got to kind of like let go. So we're building from background to foreground. So this is just like a general kind of atmospheric background color basically that I'm just sort of dabbing on. Let's let's use the heat gun again though. Yeah, the heat will get the bubbles out, it'll get the texture down. Um <laughs> I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Alright, heat gun going on. <laughs> Bob Ross, yeah, I think he would love this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, so you can see if you hold the heat gun on for too long, it kind of does create like a hole, like it pushes it away. So let's just kind of fix that and just add a little more color to it. So don't worry if you make mistakes. That's part of the process, especially when you're just learning or relearning in my case. I think I put one over there too, but that's okay. We'll hide it with a tree or something. Um, let's see. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm just throwing colors down. Boop, boop. That's good though. All right. Let's maybe let's make some structure to this because right now it's really kind of just wishy washy. I'm going to move my hot plate over a little. This would give me a little more room. Hold on, let's rearrange a little bit. Yeah, because you guys can still see that. Just give myself a little more room. There we go. That's better. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see here. We, uh, I want to give this some solid structure. So let's give, let's wipe this off. Let's see, we've got a place here. So I try and keep my palette clean as much as I can while I'm working, unless I'm working like dirty, like I was doing with the, um, the printing. Is this the color I want? Yeah. Maybe a little of this. So you see, I'm just mixing right there, right on the hot plate.
All right, so where, where is this gonna go? Where are we gonna put this? Let's think here. I'm gonna do it right, let's see, right here. and then maybe another bit like right here let's add a little bit more opacity to that now And let's add some really dark color. What's this one? Okay, I can handle that. Uh, where's that one green? I'm going to need to get some more of that color. And then maybe let's do some... Well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, again, guys, this is not really super, uh, yeah, Helly said she did this. Um, okay, so that's all really good questions, Joanna. So, um, yes, they do come as kits, and, um, it can get expensive depending on how much colors you get, etc., and also, um, you know, how, how, you know, I mean, you, if you get the full set, it's like any other art, art medium. You can get a small set and it's not too bad. Or you can go whole hog and get the whole thing. Um, so it really does kind of just depend on what you're doing with it. Um, I would recommend getting only a couple of colors or just one set to start with and then sort of... Um, sort of building on that because um, they do last a long time. These sticks or the, the little pans, they last a long, long time. And um, so you don't need to go buying them, you know, very frequently. It's, it's kind of like the pan pastels. Once you get them, they last a long time. So um, yeah, I would just recommend uh, going ahead and trying a small selection first if you want to do this. Now, I will put, um, once the video is done processing and all that, I will put in the description, you know, links. I don't know if they sell it on Amazon or what. I'll have to do some research. Um, but I'll put some links to where you can buy them. So if you just want to check back in like a day or something, um, I will let you guys know where you can buy them. Um, okay, I want to put more green in here now. So, oh, you haven't tried it this way, Helly. Which so, which way do you try it? No, I'm super curious. So I'm just leaving this one dirty. It'll cool down, but then you can reheat it. Now I'm just putting. I'm curious how you use it. And Helly is the only other person I've ever heard using this. I don't see other people using it that much. So now I've let the paint kind of cool a little bit and as it cools it's harder to get off the brush and it creates like a cool texture, almost like a dry brush technique. But then you gotta kind of jam it on there. And it gets all funky. So that's what I mean, these brushes don't buy expensive brushes for this, please. These are very cheap brushes. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Helly is always trying something new. Mm -mm. Yeah, I like trying new things. Why not? 
Life's too short to get stuck doing one thing all the time, right? I mean, some people find what they love and that's cool too. But for me, I'm always doing something funky. You guys know that. I'm always doing something weird. I mean, you know, I painted with mud, so. I'm just funky. All right, we're, we're getting somewhere, I think, with this. You guys still with me? Um, yeah, you got it. An ion, a heat gun. An ion, what's... I'm not sure what that is. Hmm. I'll have to look that up. I use a heat gun too. I like the heat gun. I think it's really fun. And you can do all sorts of fun techniques with the heat gun. I, I, I think we we're going to have to do this again if you guys are into it. Because there are so many more things I can show you. Um, this is just sort of like an intro. <laughs> like, how to get started. Okay, I need another, let's see here, can I reuse this? Oh, so much wax. Okay. It's a little steamy, but not too bad. Okay. Let's see, let me swap back to a bigger brush now. Let's just kind of clean that off a little. Um. Oh, iron! Huh! I've never seen that done. That's a new one on me. Well, I love to see it, Helly. Maybe you should do a video. Show us how it's done. Alright. We're going to make a river or something, like something, something's going to go, I'm Bob Ross in it now, dab, 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 something like that, maybe, okay, And then now let's uh let's see if I can just sort of work around that. Uh yes, iron, okay, alright. I could see how I mean I actually no, I have no idea how that would work. You've gotta tell us how this is done, Helly. Huh, you used an iron. Okay. Hey, you know what? Whatever works. Whatever works, right? I have more of this color, but I'm trying to use the little bits. And where is that? Here it is. So you see how the wax medium makes it really transparent. So much fun. So for water, I tend to lay down a dark color first and then go over it with white and oh my gosh, it makes it look so good. Okay. Let's put a little slick wax on that bad boy. Uh 
uh-oh, this paper towel is seeing the end of its days here. Next. Next. <laughs> oh goodness, the sun is going down. Let me uh, turn up the, can you guys still see okay? There we go. Just brighten up the light a little bit. Let's see. Oh, I'm glad it's relaxing. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Cool. You iron it. Hey, you know what? Hey, whatever works. There's no right or wrong way to do anything, I think. As long as you're having fun. Oops. As long as you're having fun. Okay. He doesn't want to be held. <laughs> I'll just leave him there for a minute and then I'll try and pick it up. use no wax medium and so what's amazing about this is the texture just builds naturally going to come back to that section in a bit but I want to kind of that's the background I kind of want to make a whole foreground with trees and stuff so let's get going on that let's clean this up a little bit just start fresh Ooh, that's cool yeah I could see this having so many different applications so I'm sure that there's so many different ways to, <laughs> yeah, happy little rocks. There's so many different ways to um, paint with this. But um, yeah, we're just going to have some fun with it for today. And if you guys really want to uh, do it again, we can uh, oh, you could use the iron as a plate. I could see that working. Um, <laughs> Awesome. I'm glad you guys are having fun. Okay, so now I want to put more rocks in the foreground and kind of like break up all this green so that we have more of like this color. So I'm going to go in with some more browns. Why is that steaming? Hold on. Let me get it off. No steaming. Let me check and make sure Abby's still sleeping. Yep, she's passed out. Man, I lucked out with that one. I was like, I gotta do it in the middle of the day. This is a lunch with Laura for sure. I have to do it in the middle of the day when she's sleeping. Because I don't want her anywhere near this thing. <laughs> Alright, we can do it again. Um... Yeah, I'll probably do a much better job next time once I'm more used to working with it again. I'm sort of feeling like I'm getting back into the swing of things now. But I used to do these all the time. In 2012 is when I was working with encaustic wax a lot. Okay, so let's see here. That's fun. I picked up some of the color underneath. Okay, let's swap that out. You know what? I'm not.
not really using these that much. Let me take them off. Let them cool. I have been using that guy, so I'll leave that on. Give myself a little more room to play. All right. Uh, oh, you're so welcome. I don't think I've seen you here before, Rain Chains for less. <laughs> What's your name so I don't have to call you Rain Chains? <laughs> Yeah, I don't recommend doing this around pets, little kids, not recommend it. <laughs> you don't want to have to clean up this mess with a kid or a, a pet. So that's why I chose to do it when Abby is passed out. I was like, oh good, the little kitty's sleeping, now I can play with the box. <laughs> But if, if you have a pet and they're awake, I would recommend like maybe just putting them in the other room or... So you can see, this is just, I, I'm not really, you know, I have no plan here. I'm just throwing stuff down on the canvas or board, whatever it is. All right, I kind of want this. This is a little too textured for me. I'm going to heat gun it down, and then we're going to add more later. So hold on. Heat gun oh, happening. Hold on. So it just sort of leveled it out a little bit, and it also made it easy to move around and kind of play with a little bit more. Um, I would not recommend using a hair dryer because it blows air, and so it'll push the wax around and make it sort of, unless that's the look you're going for, um, a hair dryer probably will create more problems than help. Um, definitely a heat gun. Um, and this one that I have, I got it for 25 bucks at um, Home Depot got it in the paint section so yeah not super expensive and now I can use that heat gun for other things like drying paint and doing all sorts of other stuff because I don't know where my other heat gun went to but it's cool heat guns are useful tools I don't know if you guys can see this is this showing up okay with you uh oh daria you can you can do any kind of version of encaustic wax that you want um the the next time we do this i'll show you guys how um to do like um collage with it oh my gosh i used to do so much collage with it it was so much fun because that doesn't take a whole lot of skill either you know like you just sort of um, gather uh, magazine clippings and things like that and, or like you can do like your drawings or whatever 
and then you seal them into the encaustic wax and then you can add texture and paint over it. It's really fun. So we can do all kinds of things with this. Yeah, I just thought I would show you guys a couple different ways to use it. Yeah, Joanna, I don't know where mine went to, too. Um, oh, yeah, Kislein. I Yeah, I don't know. I've never tried it with a, uh, an iron, but it does seem like it would be a little trickier. I like the hot plate because it keeps a very, very regular temperature. Like, it it heats up and, and, and turns itself off automatically, so I don't need to regulate the temperature. It does it for me. Um, so I do enjoy that a lot. Okay, so I want to put some trees in, but I think I still have to work some more texture in the background. I kind of want to um, fix up this edge a little bit. Maybe we'll swap, let's just put this aside, let's swap to a smaller brush and clean off this here so it doesn't burn. When the wax gets really thin on the palette, it can burn. So I tend to try and prevent that as much as I can, just by trying to keep it clean. There we go. Um, let's see, we'll put some of that on there. Where's my favorite color? This guy. And let's put a little of this one. Mix it together. Maybe, let's put a little yellow in there too, just for some contrast. So does anybody have any other questions? Yeah, Helly, it is really fun. Um... Oh, enjoy your supper. Thanks for coming by, Keith Lane. I hope I said that right. Um, yeah, yeah, be careful of the heat. Don't hurt yourself now. This is not for children. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, so much fun. I forgot how much fun this is. I'm glad that Emily uh, put me to it. I don't know if she's still here, but thank you, Emily. This has been so much fun to exchange uh, knowledge like this. And guys, if you haven't checked out Emily's uh, fluid acrylic pour video, oh my gosh, I can't wait to try that too. I've never tried it before, but I can just see how it'd be so much fun. I think I'm making a happy little tree. Let's put some... Yeah, see, I think I went overboard. Let me uh, scrape it away a little. I'll show you guys that method. Let's see. Oh, I scraped too far. Okay, if you scrape too far, that's fine. You can put more on. No big deal. This medium is so forgiving. Oh my goodness. I thought I was being clever, but I haven't, you know, I haven't worked with this enough to do that, I think. I need to, I need to get less rusty. <laughs> okay, I also want to put more details in this water before we put trees over top. So let's do that. Now this, this type of brush, you can use it, but like I said before, it burns easier, so you want to kind of not leave it in the hot wax like that for too long. It does eventually like get shorter and shorter. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, okay, I need white. 
I'm going to leave that there because there's plenty on there that I don't think it'll burn. Okay. some of this color <laughs> see you guys later if you're taking off thanks for coming um yeah you can add glitter you can add um you can do an acrylic painting and then do the wax over it now you can't try and paint other media over wax unfortunately that just does not work um because the wax will just resist um but yeah you can do you can this is a very very mixed media friendly um, medium. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Why is that doing that? Here we go. Uh, Joanna. All right, enjoy your pasta sauce. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh huh. Yeah, I guess it must be supper time in the UK, huh? No worries. Guys, enjoy your dinner. Um, <laughs> pasta sauce. I mean, I mean. Okay, let's see here. I'm actually going to stand up. Yeah, okay, so I need to, let's clean this off. Sure. Oh, you don't have to do that. <laughs> You're very welcome. I love teaching you guys. That's very sweet. I'll use it to get some more uh, wax colors. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> post when finished. Yeah, I can post it. I'll put it on my art account. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I want to add, see we've got, I've got some things going on here I'm not super happy with, so let me just kind of fix them. There's that one color. How does my palette always get like this? It starts out all nice and organized, and by the end time I'm done a painting, it's... Uh, no. uh, is it this one that I want? No. How about you that one? Where did it go? There. <laughs> so I just want to add a little more detail in these rocks here. Let's see. Kind of give it a little more dimension. See, so yeah, you can't be fussy. It dries so fast. You just got to keep moving. See, it's or not dries, hardens. Okay, and then I think I want to add a little shelf right there. Kind of like, oh, okay, time for the scraper tool. Definitely need a boo boo there. So let's see which one do I want. Gentler. Yeah, there you go. So you can erase it. Woohoo! That worked that time. And let's see, I'll put a little rock right there, kind of like it's being broken up by the water. Put a little white over it just so that it looks like there's something flowing. Using up this weight. Um, create, creative chaos. Yes. <laughs> Every time. Every time. I've never streamed doing this, so I admit, like, when I was teaching the workshops, I was just looking at people in person and, like, answering questions, so it's not the same when you're trying to chat. Like, I can't, right now my hands are covered in wax, so I can't really touch my keyboard. So I'm not, I'm not like going there. Okay. So at this point now I, I have like sort of a workable idea of how the background's going to be. I want to put in some cool, like vertical drama and break up all of this horizontal stuff that's going on. So I kind of want like, I think in a tree kind of like, I don't know. Let's think here. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Let's get rid of this stuff here. This is where it could either be awesome or go horribly wrong. Hopefully it won't go horribly wrong. <laughs> Which color is this? Let me let me look really quick. I have some other colors here. There we go. Oh, excuse me. That looks like a color I might want. Maybe this one too. Is that the same? No. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's the color I was looking for before. I didn't have it out. Hello. Um. <laughs> yeah, you have to move it, move it. <laughs> 
Yes, you do. You cannot just stay still with this stuff. Okay. Here comes the fun part. Let's warm up my brush real quick. I got it cold again. I'm not worried too much about whatever's on there because this is a pretty dark color. Come on. There we go. He's starting to bend. Woo! Come on. Go the other direction. There we go. It's funny, it takes a little while to work it up to being warm, but then the goat hair really does retain the, the warmth very well. Oh, I like that. Alright, I'm standing up for this because... And actually, I want to kind of... Let's rotate. Ooh, it's stuck. We want this in one stroke, guys. This is where this is where it gets kind of crazy. We're we're doing something crazy. So now I'm building texture. And then we'll come back in and do some branches and details. So what I'm doing here, I'm layering and layering, and you see the, the texture is building over what's there. And now you won't be able to see what was underneath it. So that's what I mean by texture. It's like, it's got like, just builds so fast. Okay, that gave it a lot of drama. So now let's fix the mistakes. And for that, I'm going to add, what color do I want here? This one. Hi, Abby. Did you wake up? Is it getting close to dinner time? Might have to go soon, guys, if the kitty cat comes over. Or at least take a minute to corral her. Hi, cutie. Where are you going? Okay, that's fine. You're over there. She's a good kid cat. <laughs> Hi, Leslie! Um... <laughs> yeah, it looks like chocolate. Yeah, do not eat the wax! <laughs> we already talked about that. Emily. Is Emily here? No, I think she left. Okay, so now we've got a good foundation for that tree. Now I want to add some branches. Oh, got to water it down. Or medium. So you can see it's like it, it hardens so fast. you got to move real fast. Okay. Cool. And now we're going to add another one right there. How's that? Happy little branch for a happy little tree. Okay. And then I do want to add another tree. Where do I want him? I kind of want it almost like... Let's see here. I'm going to use the edge of the brush. Oh! One right over here. Now we're just doing the trunks right now. I'm going to add the leaves and stuff in a minute. Let's just build the structure of this tree first. Hello. Hi, cutie. Okay. Hi, hi. So that one's on that shore. This one's on this shore. I like things in threes, so maybe we'll put one where? Where do you think, guys? Back here or up here? Maybe, maybe somewhere. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe somewhere in here, break up all this green. Let's do it. Wait, hold on. I need more color on there. Okay, and then I want to add some more branches. 
Let's do one like that. And let's fix this guy a little bit. Kind of when it's real hot like this, that's because the the hot plate just heated up. It's really good for like melting down what's underneath. Kind of like flattening out the texture a little bit. Okay, too hot. Um, hi Sherry, welcome back. Uh, your baby ducks. Awesome. Yeah, this is quick. This is a quick painting medium. Let's use some brown down here for these rocks. Maybe we're going to create some shadows. Try not to waste it if I can help it. Okay, we'll come back in with some green. Now let's clean this off. How you doing, Ange? You being a good girl, huh? Sorry, guys, I gotta talk to her. She'll try and come up. Right, Ab? You wanna be the star of the show? You can't be today. No kitties with wax. <laughs> Hi, Katrina. Thanks for stopping in. All right. We're having some fun today. Okay. All right, guys. So now I want to add, now we've got like the basic structure of our trees down. I want to add some smaller branches and some leaves and things. So let's start out with, I know I just wiped that off, but it was starting to get too hot, so it would start to um, smoke. So now I swap to the smaller brush. Yeah, let's see. We... Always a good idea to rotate your canvas if you need to. There we go. That's good. Maybe another little branch right there. Give him some character. Okay. So that's good for that. Now let's put in some highlights here. So this is so much fun. Oh my gosh. I love putting highlights down. Let's get this off of here now. Let's You know it's intense when you're standing up. <laughs> no sitting down for me. All right, let's put in some of this. And some of this. And a little bit of brown. Hey cutie. So I'm letting it kind of cool off just a second and then kind of stroking over. And it picks up all the highlights on the just the top level where all that texture is. Okay, I think it's too cold. Let's dip a little more. And I'm only doing it to the main uh, trunks for right now because this brush is too big for the. But that's a quick, easy way to get bark texture. You don't have to paint every little last detail. Um. Oh, that's all right, Joe. You don't apologize. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get any notifications from me anymore, guys, because my channel's going to get punked out. So, yay, YouTube. 
But um, if you guys want uh, to get updates on what I'm going to be doing with my channel and my videos and stuff, you can sign up for my email list. Um, once I get myself organized and figure out what I'm doing, uh, that's where I'm going to announce stuff. So uh, for right now, I'm still not quite sure. I'm still working out the kinks. But um, going forward, <laughs> we'll be... Uh, we might need email for notifications. I'm just trying to clean up a little bit here. All right. So now I want to put in some leaves. Um, I'm going to start out with the big one up close and let's put in. Oh, why are you steamy? Oh, over here. So you definitely don't want it to steam. That's something you want to avoid. If it happens, just try and clean it up. It means that the wax is too thin on the hot plate. There we go. Uh, okay. You'd be good now, okay? Stay there. Don't you go anywhere. So we're, again, Bob Ross in it. Just happy little leaves. Just blobbing. Blob, blob. You don't need a tiny brush. You don't need all the little leaves. You know, spelled out. You can kind of just doodle. Okay, I want some more yellow in there now to bring out some highlights. Hi, sweetheart. You being a good girl, huh? I know you woke up from your nap and I was doing something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry if I'm missing chat if you have something to tell me or you want to ask me a question just put it in all caps and I'll, I'll definitely see it better that way okay so let's also cover up some of the bottoms of these guys That way they're not so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I hear ya. Let me. Uh, it is getting close to her dinner time, so so she's gonna keep pestering me till I feed her. So, if you guys don't mind taking a little quick break. Let me feed the kitty cat and then I will come back and we can finish this. So I'm just going to clean up what's on my palette. I do not recommend walking away from your hot plate while it's turned on, uh, especially if you have pets. However, I'm just going to be a moment. So don't do what I'm doing here. I'm also going to be in the same exact room so I can keep an eye on it. But don't like leave it on and walk away and go to another room, do laundry, come back. Don't do that. Do not leave it alone. I'm going to be only like a couple of feet away and I'll be able to see it. So, I'll be right back.
to it. Nobody, nobody had a catastrophe while I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, pickle. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, YouTube is yeah. We're we're. I'm not gonna talk about it today. I I will when I decide what I'm gonna do. I'll let you guys know, but. I'm leaving all that negativity aside for right now. We're just going to have some fun. What did I do there? I'm weird. Um, <laughs> all right. I don't remember exactly what we were doing, but let's just have some more fun and finish this up. And then I'll call it a stream because we've been on for two hours now. This is so much fun, though, guys. It's like such a time suck. Like you don't even realize how much time you're spending doing this. Okay, so I'm just creating some color variation in the foreground, I'm thinking about adding maybe a little path or something through here. Why are you steamy? Oh, it's too thin. Too thin. Sorry. Okay. Um, happy leaves, yeah. Yeah, Abby, well, she's not been feeling super great, so she was sick last night, so she didn't eat all of her breakfast this morning, and now she's, like, super hungry. A little bit early. She's a half hour early for, for dinner, but she didn't eat all of her breakfast, so we'll let that go. Poor little thing. All right, so, yeah, now she's happy. <laughs> Shannon. I thought Shannon did like leaves. Okay, I feel like adding some color variation down here. So let's add a little path. Maybe like coming, yeah, I think let's add a little path through there. So let's start with our dark brown and we'll add So I'm gonna kind of let's uh let's heat gun this for a second. Sorry, hold on, heat gun time. That just smoothed it out and made it so much easier now to create new texture. So I'm worrying about the texture right now and then we're going to do a color over it. Okay, it's still too hot. So I'm going to just have to... Alright, leave it alone, Lauren. Just let it cool for a second. <laughs> Getting a little excitable there. Okay, let's see how that works out. Yeah, there we go. A little path coming through the woods. I could imagine it winding along that little creek. Now I'm sounding like Bob Ross for sure. What am I doing? Okay. Why? Okay, that just needs to cool down. I'll work in some other spot. Let's uh, put some dark right there. Break up that bright spot. <laughs> Back away from the camp. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love you guys. I'm having so much fun. All right. Let's put some more of this on there. Is that, you think that's cool enough? Okay. 
There we go. Yes. Okay, now we've got that all covered and in the right texture. So now let me just frame it really quick with some dark foliage. And then put a couple highlights, I think. Put this stuff other places. Where else can this go? Right there. Okay. All right, now I'm going to add some of that really pretty bright yellowy greeny color. I'm just adding it right to what I've already got there. Let's put a little highlights in for fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, channeling Bob Rock. <laughs> if I start building it, I don't know where I would put a cabin, but, but yeah, if I put a cabin in here, I'd totally feel very Bob Ross. Okay. All right, Abby, we hear you. <laughs> She's funny. She woke up with the attitude. She's like, hey, you were doing something without me? All right. So now I want, to, I think, to switch to my little brush and add more details and kind of flush that out more. But I'm pretty happy with how that, how that kind of cuts the canvas. It wasn't all one big blob anymore. So let's put some of this and let's mix a little bit of that, a little bit of this. This one. No, wait, that one's that one. Which one? Yes, a little bit of that. Okay. And the reason I added some red to that is just because I want a complementary color in there. It'll draw the eye. You can pretend that there's maybe flowers growing nearby, I'm throwing a color, or maybe there's a little bit of red in the dirt there. Who knows? It's our own world. We can do whatever we want. Right, Em? Put a rock right there. All right, I hear you. Now you want to play? Now that you're done eating, huh? Okay. I hear ya. I'm almost done, cutie. So now I'm just trying to add some little details. make it kind of all come together. I want more of this color in there. Wait, I think this one is that. Oh yeah? <laughs> um. <laughs> What's up, Katrina? Come on. There we go. That's the color I'm after. Yes. I'm going to add a little of that in all these rocks right up front. Oh, yeah? Where's your toy? Oh, you got like 50 over there. Come here. Here, play with this one. Play with that one. No, you want me to 
want to play with you? All right, you're gonna have to wait just a minute. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <laughs> This is a live show. I'm going to add this color in some of these rocks, right? In the background. I like this thing happening there, but we can kind of add some with the same color. It kind of ties it all together when you're using the same colors. Right, Abby? Yeah, you're being a good girl, huh? Um... <laughs> Alright, you guys still with me? Anybody have any questions before we take off? I'm, I'm going to go and uh, give Abby a little attention now that she's woken up. But I think you guys get the idea of where I would take this. Um, you know, I, I would keep working more on the trees here. Add some more color. Make mistakes and then scrape them off. You know. The usual. Uh oh. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, 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 ah. No. No. You're not allowed up there. Okay. All right, guys. This little cutie is being a little bit of a brat right now, so I think I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna just clean up. I got her in my arms so she doesn't jump. <laughs> so the the way that I clean up here. The best and safest way, just make sure that you get any excess wax up off the palette. I know, does it smell good? Abby's sniffing. We both love the smell of the beeswax, man. It's amazing. Anybody have any questions? So what I'm going to do, the best thing to do is turn it off and then unplug it. Just that's it. as simple as that. Let it cool down and then you can handle everything. So that's it. Um, yeah, I'll finish this up and I'll post it on my Instagram. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, thank you again, Shara, for uh, your donation to the channel. Let me do a shout out really quick to see who's here. And I'm going to do one really quick thing before we go. So don't, so hang out for just a second. But let's see, we've got Sherry, Joey, Shannon, um, Leslie, we've got Squishy, who else is here, Katrina, Sammy, who else, Jody? Alright, hi guys. So before we go, I would like to give away some of these dudes that we did earlier these little thingies so I'm going to do a quick giveaway and I'm just going to throw these in an envelope and mail them to you so it's international um, you have to be willing to give me your mailing address and I'm just going to pick one randomly write a little note on the back to you and send it in the mail so um, I'm going to pick three people and so what we're going to do is pick a number Let's see, there's 30 people here. Pick a number between 1 and 50. Oh, and I need my random not org. And, um, <laughs> hi, Loretta. All right, so we're going to do a quick giveaway, and we're going to do, instead of three different um, giveaways, what we're going to do is the three closest people to the random number that we pick. So let me find random.org. Um, just so just uh, hang on a second. So the, the rules are pick a number between 1 and 50. Um, you can only enter a number once, no chatting during the chat. Um, if you um, pick if you go over, it doesn't count. It's only it's the price is right rule. So it's you, ha you have to be under the number and um, what else if you pick one number and somebody else has it they win first whoever whoever did first so make sure you're on live chat and I think that's it I'm just doing this for fun really quick randomly so um, 
All right, are you guys ready? I'm gonna type go and then you go, okay, ready? Go. Yes, closest numbers without going over. Thank you, Sammy. And I'll just give it a minute. <laughs> and so I'll just, I'll pick three of the nicest looking ones and I'll just send them. Send them off. What do you think, Ab? You gonna help me pick? <laughs> Just something a little fun, something a little different. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to live stream that much anymore after all the YouTube fiasco is over, so let's make some, let's have some fun with it. But I'm, I'm working on different options, guys, so. Oh, now everybody, all the lurkers come out. Hi, guys. Hi, B and Kelly, Maria. <laughs> Hi, Joe Beth. You're still here. Yeah, 1 to 50. Sorry, guys. We've only got 30 people in the chat, so I figure let's let's do 1 to 50. So you can pick another one, Shara. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. I think, is that everybody? Get your numbers in. Go, go, go. All right. Okay, so we're going to pick the three closest people. Oh, we've got 42. Anybody else? Stragglers? Get it in. All right. Um, rain chains for less. I don't know. Try and put it in again. Go on. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe type it out um there you go perfect i don't see anything to approve loretta all right guys everybody in all right i'm gonna hit stop okay so here we go generate so the number is 23, so the three closest people to 23, I'm going to wait for at least two other mods to tell me. So it looks like we've got Joey is one, so we'll do, uh, let's get a post-it note. Abby, are you going to help me get a pen? So you've got Joey, 17 looks like squishy maybe, Joey is 20, oh that's fun, writing while you're, <laughs> you lag, um, Maria looks like, yep, Maria is closer, she's 22. And who else? Looks like Squishy. So sketch at 17. Is that right, guys? We've got 22 is the most closest, then Joey with 20, and then sketch with 17. Is that right? Maria, Joey, sketch. Cool. Awesome. All right, guys, so um, just email me at lauracolors2. Here, I'll type that in one-handed. Hold on. Give me a sec. At gmail.com. So just uh, go ahead and email me with your address, and then I'll send those on out. So you'll just get a little envelope with a little doodle from me. Why not? All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Does anybody have any questions before we go? <laughs> You're welcome. It's been my pleasure. I'm glad I did this. I had a lot of fun. I haven't done this in so long, I forgot how enjoyable and relaxing it is. So, um, 
Yeah, and we'll do another one if you guys want. Um, we can show, you know, another process maybe where we do a collage or more printmaking because that's always fun. Um. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful, magical time coloring and painting and stuff. And Abby says bye! <laughs> Alright guys. Take care.